Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's Beth Benson. I'm in Crestline. It's, uh, I'm calling myself the Crestline Creatrix. And this is the Crestline Creatrix Matrix. Um, and I'm just playing with all of that. So this is day one. It's the deep dive with Jessica Saran. And I have um, combed my hair and put on lipstick, <laughs> which is something I haven't done for months. Uh, but I, since I'm creating a video uh, where I'm going to be on it, I thought I might do that for you. I tried to pluck, too. So if you see wayward airs, you'll let me know in the comments um, <laughs> or not. Um, Jessica's uh, invitation today was to imagine into the artists we are becoming so that we can have epic art careers. And um, so she had us, uh, she designed a fill in the blank bio that we would write uh, about our future selves. And that's what I'm uh, delivering for you now. Uh, and I'm going to read it. So I don't know what it's going to look like for you, but that's what's going to happen. My name, again, is Beth Benson. Here is this imagined into becoming bio. Having always known that she was here to do great things, Beth Benson made it her life's mission to bring art and healing into the widest swath of the world she could affect. Art and healing was something she was infinitely familiar with because she knew from the earliest of crayon days that picking up the purple one and drawing with it could create realms of reality out of what was before that picking up only unnameable longing and desire. Beth had the great fortune of studying art and healing as an emphasis for her master's degree in transformative art, taught in the School of Arts and Consciousness in a program that doesn't exist anymore at a school that has since closed down. <laughs> The very Hogwarts of her time, this education was a key force that helped her work become synonymous with Beth herself. She is her art. She embodies her healing. Her presence is a force for the well-being of all sentient life in the everywhere and nowhere that she goes. Beth's work is exhibited in public art installations at the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, the former site of the Twin Towers in New York City, and on the steps of the Acropolis and the welcome port of Crete in Greece. She performs regularly at the obelisk by the Thames in London called Cleopatra's Needle and can often be spotted under the Eiffel Tower in a web of weaving she wears for these occasions. The Obamas, Bidens, Clintons, Carters, and Bushes, Oprah, the Dalai Lama, and Glide community of San Francisco are all moved, touched, and inspired by her work, and have said so in testimonials encouraging others to learn more about what her presence does in businesses, institutions, and communities around the world. In very real ways, her work and the art she makes with what gets thrown away has had a real and lasting effect on climate change and how we view the art of what was formerly landfill waste. The New York Times recently hosted a conversation between Beth and Greta Thunberg at the Bioneers event held in conjunction with the celebration of all nations part of the Paris Agreement having reached milestones that indicate that the Project Drawdown Manifesto has been adopted and is working and human life on the planet is foreseeable for all imagined future scenarios. <laughs> I gotta go, maybe that's Oprah calling. <laughs>